Y'all, I feel like I'm always wearing a cardigan and a tank top in my videos, but it works. So we're gonna keep doing it. Hi everyone, it's Julia. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing the other pair of the Yana duo, who is Liliana Ketchman. So Liliana was a dancer on Dance Moms who was on the mini team alongside Eliana. And once the mini team disbanded for season seven, Abby kept Eliana and Liliana as the two competitors for the mini category in competitions. So a lot of people are concerned for Liliana because they've seen her persona change a lot over the past year or two. And people feel that she acts too grown for her age and she's not allowed to be a kid. And they feel that Stacy, her mother, is enabling and controlling this behavior. So I wanted to dive into this because a lot of people asked, and plus this is something I've actually been curious about for a couple months. You know, but I was like, you know what? Let me just dive into it and see what I can find. So let's get into it. So Liliana was considered one of Abby's favorites on the show. She loved Lily's dancing and she found that Liliana was adorable and really sharp for her age. And quite honestly, Liliana reminded me of Mackenzie and Brooke because she did a lot of acro and contortion um, moves. And so I think that's also why Abby really liked her because she reminded her of Brooke possibly. A lot of people in the fandom feel that Eliana was better than Liliana in terms of, you know, the two of them. And that's because people felt that Ellie was more graceful and mature in her dancing than Lily. But that makes sense because Ellie is the older dancer. So of course she's going to be better. But Lily was still really great for a seven year old. So during season eight of Dance Moms, it seems like Lily was under a lot of pressure, like a lot of pressure all the time. And she visibly had panic attacks on camera. And this really reminded me of Paige and Kendall. So you just saw that clip of Lily having a panic attack on camera and she also had a lot of other freak outs and breakdowns on camera. Again, I said in my other Dance Moms videos, I can't stand when these, these, these people film these sorts of things because these are children literally freaking out over a really pressurized toxic environment. It's really sad and it's kind of, it's really expletive to film those sorts of things. But I think Stacy handled it pretty well. So that's good, but I just think it's really sad. and. Quite honestly, I think the reason why Lily went through this is because the mother, Stacy, was pretty entitled and felt like we were here before, so we deserve this and we deserve that. And I think that indirectly put pressure on Lily, as well as Abby herself, had a lot of expectations for Liliana. She was like, yo, because you've been here before, you should be leaps and bounds above everybody. You should be knocking out the park. You should be my star. You should be everything I want you to be. Basically like, you know, she was just like, you've been here before, so you should get it already. And I really thought that was unfair because Lily was only seven on the show. And the other thing is you gotta remember, Dance Moms is a really toxic, already really volatile environment. And I hate when people will always talk about, oh, well, you know, some of the moms, they're not as crazy as they were depicted on camera. Of course, production made their parents act in certain ways that made the situation worse. Of course, producers had a hand in that. But at the end of the day, there are certain things that these mothers have said on camera and around their children that they shouldn't be saying. So we can't excuse editing and production on everything. At the end of the day, you can probably still push a storyline without being completely below the belt. So. And you know what taking responsibility for your actions is called? Accountability. But we're gonna get more into that when I start talking about Stacy. And so another fact about Lily is that she was born a preemie and that she has to take growth hormones. So Stacy revealed this on the show. She was premature. She's been getting growth hormone shots every day since she was like two. She was so little that, you know, those carriers, I would have her in there and people would think it was empty. So I can relate to this because I am also a preemie. I was born three months early and my lungs actually weren't even developed when I was born. So I had to stay in an incubator for two months after I was born. So that way I could grow and develop and stuff like that. But I never needed to take growth hormones or anything like that. But I can relate to just the struggle, I guess, or I guess the mom's concern in a way of just having a preemie child. Cause I know that's like what, how my mom was feeling at times. So obviously I was too young to actually like witness the complications my parents went through with having a preemie child. But 
from what my mom told me, she went to see me in the hospital every day. I had a nurse come check on my heart all the time and, you know, to make sure that I was okay. But and also they were concerned that I would fall behind in school just because I was born, you know, so much earlier than everybody else. But I turned out great. So for all my preemie babies out there, we went through a lot, but we, we kicking, we kicking. So as much as I was against Stacy's actions on the show, and I'm going to get more into those later in the video, I really do have to acknowledge that Liliana is a very talented and strong little girl. And even though she really had her rough patches on the show and it really wasn't a great environment for her, I think ultimately she really demonstrated strength through her dancing and I think that was really beautiful to see. I mean having a preemie child is not easy so I'll definitely give Stacy that. It's not easy to deal with that because a lot of kids who are born premature have a lot of complications. Thank god I wasn't one of those children that had complications but a lot of children that were born premature have tons of complications and so the fact that um, Liliana seemed to rise above those things and make a name for herself and be such a wonderful dancer. It's a testament to her strength, resiliency, and her intellect, her musicality. You know, she has a lot of musical intelligence and bodily kinesthetic intelligence. You know, we're talking about the eight uh, to intelligences, that whole multi-intelligence theory. I forget what it's called. But yeah, basically, Liliana is very strong and um, skilled. And I won't be surprised if she grows up to be very resilient because she's been through a lot for only being 13. It also seems like she went through a lot of self-doubt in the second half of season eight. And Abby even pointed this out by saying that she's not dancing at the level that she knows Lily to be. And Lily said that she paid too much attention to the drama and the moms. And I singled you out because I just feel like you're a little bit different than you were. This is not the same kid that was seven years old that went out there and nailed every single number. Well, I just think that I'm paying too much attention to like the moms and all the drama. And I feel like I get really stressed out from everything. And I think I just need to get my head in the, like, in the room where I am. I agree 100%. And this was very true because something I noticed about season eight that was really subtle was the fact that they just showed the kids more. The kids arguing, the kids talking, what the kids felt. They showed the effects of the show on the kids a lot more and the kids were a lot more expressive about it and i think that is really sad that lily was doubting her ability so much and it kind of just brought me to the understanding that lily was not built for it lily was not built for dance moms neither was Paige, neither was kendall and i'm not saying that in a way to dig at them i'm not i'm not doing that but what i'm saying is that some kids just handle pressure differently than others some kids really aren't good under pressure they're very sensitive and other kids are a little you know harder and kind of have a harder shell like asia for example asia went on record and talked about how during dance moms she kind of expected a lot of the drama and a lot of the pressure because she was with a bunch of teachers in the past that were really hard on her and she kind of was just made for that like she kind of just had that hard shell but Ultimately, I don't think any kid needs to be on Dance Moms, whether you're built for it or not. Like, no kid, I don't think any kid is really built for Dance Moms, but other kids can handle it better than other kids. That's what I mean to say. And I just feel like Lily was one of those kids that just was really sensitive and needed a lot of encouragement and needed a lot of pushing. Not like coddling, but she needed a lot of that positive reinforcement, a lot of that courage, a lot of that push. Not somebody to berate her not someone to put all this pressure saying you're supposed to be better than everybody like imagine it sucks when you're in a situation where you're expected to be the best and you end up not performing as well that is really really sucky and that takes me to talking about simone biles that video is coming up but i wanted but that kind of reminds me of simone biles where she was the goat and she was expected to outperform everybody in the olympics and then she pulled out because of mental health and so it's like you build 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 these kids up or these people up and then they end up falling because they just can't um live up to the pressure and so that's what i just really felt for lily for because it's it's not easy it's not easy to be expected to be the greatest at something and then you're not living up to your the expectations that people set for you it's not easy and when you're only 10 10 <laughs> it's got to be worse Again, I feel like Lily had that energy of like, oh, I've done this before, I should be used to it. But no 10-year-old little girl or any young kid 
needs to be accustomed to that much drama and dysfunction that's not normal you're like you're going through so much as a kid you're growing in so many different ways so many experiences are hitting you in the face you don't need to be accustomed to dysfunction when you've only lived like three percent of your life i'm sorry you like that's not normal so i really felt bad for her during that time and i'm glad she got out of it i also want to give credit to liliana for being very attuned to her emotions and feelings and she kind of reminded me of kendall a little bit a lot of people felt that kendall was whiny and kendall was this and that whatever you think about kendall you got to give her credit and really attribute that she knew how to express herself when she was feeling a certain way she knew how to talk about it she knew what she was feeling and she could tell you and lily i think was the same way she knew like that she was feeling a way if she was feeling some type of way about you, she said it. If she was feeling some type of way about a situation, she said it. She never hid it. And I think that's a very good skill to have because it lets people know, hey, these are my boundaries. So that's a good skill. And I, and I think it just shows that Lily's well-spoken for her age. So let's move on to Stacy, the main event, you know, the one that people like to criticize the most. So many people, including myself, believe Stacy to be one of the most disgraceful moms on the show. And the funny thing is, I actually didn't think she was that bad when I was watching it back in 2016 when season seven was a thing. I knew she was a stage mom, but I didn't think she was that crazy unless she got entangled with Yolanda. When her and Yolanda went at it, then I was like, yeah, this woman's crazy. But I felt like on her own, she seemed to be okay and the elite mom seemed to tolerate her, at least more than Yolanda. I felt like that was the only time she was really annoying, but as I rewatched and got older, I really didn't like how she used her doctorate as a means to feel like she was better than everyone else. I kind of feel like I got that vibe from her that she was like, oh, I'm a side D. I have my doctorate and I'm gonna, you know, like I don't know. Like, I feel like she kind of had that energy about her and she even diagnosed Yolanda on the show, which in all honesty was a really bad move for a licensed therapist. So sorry for your patience. I'm not really worried about your obsession with me and I don't deal with dissociative identity disorder in my practice. Oh, wow. Oh, we just got diagnosed. And she was weaponizing her profession to lift herself up and put others down. So that's the problem. You can't just go around diagnosing people, even if it's, if it's for a joke or for a dig, because this is a profession. Like psychology is a whole practice. It's a whole discipline. You can't just go around diagnosing people, especially when you're not in a formal therapy session. That's just unethical and that's violating a patient's rights. So some people might be thinking, oh, it wasn't that deep, blah, 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 blah. But no, really like you can't go around weaponizing your profession and saying, oh yeah, I'm a psychologist. So I'm gonna diagnose you. You can't do that. Cause really in a way she was doing armchair psychology in the sense that she doesn't actually know what Yolanda's got going on up in the noggin so she can't say this that or the third and I also kind of feel like she said that in a very mocking tone like oh I don't have dissociative identity disorder what are you trying to say to people that actually have that Stacey what are you trying to say <laughs> you know what I'm saying and again some people out there are going to be like oh it was edited blah, blah, blah. no that was not edited okay the producers can provoke and they can edit things yes but to literally go try to diagnose somebody that's not something that you can be provoked to do. That's not, it's not like the producers uh, told her to say, tell her she has DID, no, okay? So I actually saw a Reddit post that actually went more in depth to Stacy's irresponsibility. And so I thought this was very interesting. So they said that Stacy put Lily on point before it was medically recommended. And it's even worse because Lily was a preemie and that she's small and underdeveloped for her age. I think that was a very interesting take and that's not something I ever considered. But I will say we can't be 100% sure whether or not Stacy was being irresponsible. Um, I'm only saying this because who knows, maybe Stacy was checking in with Lily's doctors and maybe she was like letting them know like, okay, she does this kind of dance and things like that. You know, so we don't know for sure if L Stacey was being irresponsible, but I can understand why people would think that. Lily is a preemie, so she has to take these growth hormones. That's already a lot on her body. And then making her do contortion, I can see how people be concerned because even Brooke herself has went on YouTube videos talking about how she, her body's this and like her shoulders dislocated and, the, and all these other things because of all the years of acro that she did. So it's really not something to play with and your body is very 
you know, fragile and it's very, you need to take good care of your body. And so I can understand why people are kind of like, yo, she's having her daughter flip and do all these crazy tricks when she's barely developed. I can see why that's a, why that would be a point of concern. But again, we can't say for sure if Stacy was being irresponsible because we don't have the doctor's notes, but I do understand it. So again, because Stacy is a psychologist, I really question why she would put her child in an environment like Dance Moms. Like if you're a psychologist, if you study these things, even if she's not, she didn't specialize in child psychology, right? Or child and adolescent psychology, psychopathology, what have you, you still do take a course in it in college. I think most uh, psychologists, they'll take developmental psychology or things like that. And so you should have an understanding of how this can impact a child's development, putting them on in front of the camera. But this is a point that I wanted to make. And again, this goes back to parents of most child stars will put their kids in these kind of compromising situations because of the fame because of the money and because of the benefit they can live off their kid forever they can live off their kid they don't have to work stacy had a pretty respectable job as a psy psychologist and you make good money when you have a doctorate in psychology you make pretty decent money i don't know what um lily's father does but i heard he was also a psychologist i'm not sure but if he is that makes it even worse because you know, being a psychologist, like you make decent money, but I guess they see, oh, our daughter is cute. Our daughter's a good dancer. We can put her out in on social media and then she can make us money and we don't have to work anymore. And we don't have to stress anymore or whatever. Again, your kids should not be used as your meal ticket. You shouldn't be living off of your kids' expenses. You shouldn't be pushing your kids out there to the masses in order to make money for you. It reminds me of Jeanette McCurdy and how like, oh, I had to act because my parents needed money. We needed money. And it's like, you brought your kid into the world. Stacy brought Lily into this world. Lily didn't bring Stacy into the world. And so it is not your child's responsibility to be making money for you. It is not, that is not the natural order of things. You need to be providing for that child. And so that's the thing. It just doesn't make any sense. Like she put Lily in this kind of terrible environment and she was literally sacrificing her child's mental health just for her to get famous, just for her to make money. And it's just not right. And so I really question any mother who put their child on Dance Moms, unless like oh, the original moms, they didn't really have a choice so much in the beginning, but any mother like after them, putting your kid on that kind of show, I, I really side eye you hard because it's like, why are you, you're really gonna sell your kid's soul for a buck? That's what you, that's basically what it is. You're selling your kids, you're selling your kid's soul, their peace and their sanity for a buck. Another thing I just wanted to add is I just feel like what happened to organically growing your kid's talent? All these moms seem to want to just have a get rich quick scheme by going on dance moms and get exposure from dance moms. And it just seems like nowadays people just don't want to do things organically, you know, go to auditions, work on your craft, work hard and get noticed. And I understand that it is pretty difficult to get noticed in Hollywood. And quite honestly, Hollywood to a large degree is not what we think it is. A lot of people are either born into it or they know someone that knows someone. So it's really hard to make it in Hollywood. So I get people's desperation, but it's like, you're gonna put your kids through these compromising situations at what cost? At a cost of their mental and physical health. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And I don't know Liliana's dance background fully, but I'm sure she probably went to prestigious dance competitions. And I'm pretty sure she was part of a respectable dance company before going to Abbey. And so it's like, again, these parents don't want to just have their kids go through it the organic, um, natural process and have them work hard. It's all about, let me push you in social media and da 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 da. And it's like, come on. It's like, why, why put your kids through this? Why put your kid through something like that? It's like these parents are so tempted by the things of this world, the material, the money, the fame, when really this is all going to pass away once you pass away. Like, let's just be real. You're not going to die like with your fame. Like you can't take your fame to the afterlife or what have you, whatever you believe in. So that's what just is really sad to me. And I just wish that these parents would think about that more before putting their kids in these situations. So let's get into how Lily acts today. So again, a lot of people are concerned for Lily because of the way she conducts herself on social media, most per particularly her YouTube. And so I took like just a scroll through and I actually watched a couple of her videos. Like, and it was actually brought to my attention by this channel called the Dad Challenge channel. And he actually said that many people who watch Lily's content are men over the age of 24, which is already really risky. Daughter, 
and puts it out there and I have the analytics can show you guys who's watching it and it's dudes adult males over the age of 24 the majority over the age of 24 are watching her on Instagram okay more adult males watch her than her teeny bopper friends I don't think Lily's Instagram is as bad I mean yeah like some posts she probably doesn't need to put up there but I think for the most part her Instagram isn't horrible but her YouTube is what's the worst because of the thumbnails the clickbait the topics uh flirting with my best friend's friend's crush um you're literally 13 okay like you should why are you why are you already pushing the disloyal narrative I'm a disloyal blah 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 by flirting with your best friend's crush even if it's a joke okay like it's still kind of petty and then the flirting with my brother's best friend that's just weird when you're still kids you know what i'm saying that's weird being pregnant for 24 hours okay why are you to like this is when i think when she was 12 i'm like bro why are you pretending to be pregnant for 24 hours like what kind of prank is that and there was also a lot of controversy where she pretended that she was bald for 24 hours and she got a lot of backlash on this video and a lot of people were pissed about it. Um, I'm not sure if she pulled the video down, but I will put it up here if she did put it down, take it down. But she got a lot of controversy for that as well. And so it just seems like all her videos are her trying to push the envelope, just like Eliana's videos. And I guess this Piper Raquel squad, you know, them kids, like they try to be, they be pushing the envelope and it's all the adults behind them pushing them. And it's like this machine. You know, and it makes you wonder, does Lily really want to do this? Because from what I could tell from the show, Lily seems like a pretty average kid, like well-adjusted kid for the most part. And you could tell that her first love was dance. And so it makes you wonder, like, does she even really want to do this for her life? I think it's just an interesting question. For example, her video about being 21 for a day, that was not it, okay? That was not it. The outfit, the, the attitude the mom the clear terrible acting it was a joke yes but it was the most cringe acting the most cringe video i have ever watched not. okay are we done with makeup are we done no you need lip oh my god how can i forget you <gasps> bam oh my god yep am i 21 yet uh... oh, wait i almost forgot the shoes hold on here's the final Outfit. I can't wait to go out and show everybody. Yeah, right. Outfits. You're literally not going out. In I'm that. mom. I'm 21. You can't control me. You wish. Ha 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 ha. Boom. So anyway, what are you gonna do now? What's happening the rest of the day? Tell me. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just setting up my Tinder account. Yeah, that's not happening. Um. What are you shopping for a husband? No, I'm just setting up my um, Tinder account. I mean, I'm 21, so. What really blows me is. This is something that I really want to address. She shouldn't be acting the way she was acting in that video, even if it is a joke. And it's like, does she think that that's how 21 year olds really act? All they do is go out and party and do this and that and be defiant. Again, even if it's a joke, it's a stupid joke. And I also wanted to address the, cause this was actually said on my last video. I, and this was like a very small minority of people, very small minority of people. But I did have a couple people complaining about, oh, well, the way Ellie dresses isn't a big deal. Blah, 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 blah. Leave her alone. Da, 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 da. Again, I think it was a very small minority of people. And I think most of these people were children, were teenagers themselves. So I'm going to say this. I don't care what y'all say. Okay. I am not for policing people. I am not trying to blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to police anyone on how they dress or how they conduct themselves. But let's be honest. Lily is a minor. Ellie is a minor. They still have report cards. If you still have a report card, you should not be dressing the way Lily was dressing in that 21 blah, blah, blah video. No, okay? And do not try to make me feel any different about it because I don't, okay? That's not right. She can't even sign off on her own thing. Like if she needs to get permission for something, she can't sign her own name. She can't drive. She's not of age. She's a kid. Okay, and some of these people will try to mask you like, oh, you, again, you shouldn't be trying to police people. They need to be, you can't, uh, body positivity, blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry, but that doesn't apply to a child. That doesn't apply to kids, okay? And that's not, that's not like adults. When adults express concern about that, that's not over. 
kids, but her literal analytics say it. There's men over 24 watching her content. You don't know what people are gonna do with that content. You don't know who's watching. You don't know what's being done behind the scenes. So why even put your child in a compromising situation? Why put your child in such a terrible situation where they're being exposed and being exploited for what? For money. I wanted to say again, for any of y'all who wanna have selective hearing, I really don't think Liliana's outfits or anything like that is really that bad but that video in particular about the acting 21 that was over the top that was really over the top and it was just weird it was just weird it was awkward and i just think in general like i said let her be a kid like let her um explore and enjoy herself as a young teen without feeling pressure to post on social media in a specific way so again we want kids to have body positivity of course and i would want lily or any other child to have that but like I said, some of the video topics that she does are really over the top and really weird. And like I said, that acting over 21 video was just a little much. The pregnancy video was much. The flirting and this and that is a, is mu a lot. It's much. Okay, it's too much sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And so like I said, I just feel like in general, I just hope this is what she actually wants to do and that she's not being pressured. But I think in comparison to Ellie, and I don't want to compare kids, but I think in comparison to Ellie... Lily's content is more tame, but it still could use a little more dialing back. And I'm not even trying to make do a dig at Lily. This is not a dig at her at all, but she looks very young, possibly because she was born a preemie. There are a lot of kids out there who look really young for their age, really old for their age. There's people my age. I'm going to be 23 soon. I still look like I'm 17, so I'm told. That's fine though, cause you know, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look pretty good when I'm 50. But, <laughs> but basically Lily looks even smaller for her age. Like she just looks so young. And I think that's what makes it even weirder because she looks so little. So it's just so weird when you see her parading around in these videos, clearly being coerced and coached by her mother. It's just weird. And I think again, at the end of the day, of course, we don't want to be out here literally policing kids, but they are children. They deserve to be kids. You literally spend, I think, maybe 15% of your childhood. I don't know the exact number. I'm just estimating about 15% of your of your life in childhood. And then the whole 85% is for adulthood. So for any of y'all young girls watching this video, if you happen to be watching, you don't need to rush the process. You don't need to rush being a kid because you're only a kid for so long. You're only a kid for so long and before you know it, you blink and you're like 30. You have so much time. Things get harder, especially as you get older. You get faced with different challenges. You get challenged in so many other ways. Being a kid, you get to enjoy just going to school, maybe having responsibilities here and there, doing your extracurriculars. You're not expected to do so much because you're not of age yet. So enjoy that freedom and enjoy that time because once you become an adult, there's so many other things you gotta worry about. You gotta worry about money for one. You gotta worry about paying for yourself. You gotta worry about all these other things, loans, bills, all this stuff that adult me has to deal with that you know wishes that she was still 11 you know and when i think back to my child years when i think back to like the age that lily and ellie were those are some of my best years i used to just go to the store like i would walk to the store with my friends we used to walk like the three musketeers you know these two friends they know who they are <laughs> um but we used to always go walk to this grocery store we used to just do a bunch of crazy stuff go eat after school do all the, you know just kid stuff playing my video games it was a really peaceful time it was a really cool time and i just think it's so sad that these kids nowadays don't get to enjoy that and especially kids that are famous they're being they're being paraded in front of a camera having to always be on 10. you know it's like dang like does she even have a regular life can she even have a normal life or is everything being filmed is everything always taking pictures always filming always doing this does she have a life that's just for herself you know it, it's just it's just really sad and so Lily, I, I get concerned for her. I hope things are okay with her. And I just hope that this isn't another Jeanette McCurdy situation. I hope this isn't another like, oh, you have to do this this way and you have to make money for me and you have to do this. And like, I really hope that she's just able to live a regular childhood in some way, shape or form. And I just hope that once she matures that all of this won't affect her. You know, it's just not, it's just not fair and it's not right and it's just weird. So again, her parents, shame on them. And 
I guess we'll just have to see where things go with her in the next couple of years. But until then, let's just pray that she's doing okay and that this won't affect her too much. So thank you all for watching this video. I know it was kind of long, but I just had a lot to say and I feel like my thoughts were all over the place. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.